Welcome to part 2 of my AW11 MR2 manual conversion. Last time, I left you all with removing all of the connecting components in preparation for the motor drop. The remainder of this task will be snipped into two videos, as a 40 minute clip might not be that fun to stomach. So do let me know if longer videos may be your thing for the future, or if you prefer videos around the 10 to 15 mark, which is what I'm trying here. There was a bit of an oopsie, and unfortunately the footage on my camera didn't quite record, so I didn't get the recording of removing the drive shafts out, but it was a pain, so I had to use that power drill. And I don't know if you can tell, but the thread on this got absolutely minced on both sides. Um, the split pin on this side did manage to come out, but on the passenger side, sorry, the driver's side, um, it basically seized in there and we ended up having to snap it off either end, but both of them ended up just being so incredibly difficult to remove. And then same goes for this side where it's very clear that thread is missing. All right, so under the car, I've just cleaned this up just so it's easy to see. But there are six of these studs and they look like Allen studs. And they are an eight, eight mil. Oh. Surprise, motherfucker! Ooh. Big spider. I lost the spider though. I don't know how I feel about it. Curious what these things are. They look like. Unless the bolts are a different length. No, they're the same length. They're like little curved brackets. Cool, third one out. Alright, so looking online to remove the drive shaft, you have to remove what I'm thinking of these two bolts here. And I believe that they control this beam and this beam. So that's just a 17. So there's two 17s that we need to remove. And we also got to remove the split pin here. Once the castle nut is removed, the tie rods should just pop loose by hammering the side of the hub where the rod is attached. At least that's how it's supposed to work. I mean, this is another way to do it, I guess. Okay, so. Oh, the right's leaking, but it doesn't leak. So on. then. Passenger side has been done, so now we're just going to remove the driver's side um, shaft. Now the bolts have already been loosened, so all I need to do is just remove them completely. Remove all the stuff at the front and then slide it out. And with that out of the way, the automatic shafts are just wrapped in cling film. Not quite sure what we're going to be doing with them because obviously the manual shafts are different to the automatics so probably scrap them i'm not sure i can't remember if we got given the um like the cv stuff so these might have to be reused but everything else is pretty much null at this point uh, growth strap i guess maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'm See, we could follow like the instructions on a website, or we could do it my way, which is uh, no idea, no uh, labeling of items, just keep pulling bits off. Just keep pulling bits off. Eventually, then, the engine will just fall out. Yeah, it, it will eventually come out, and then the fun part begins when you put it all back together again, and you don't know where anything goes because you didn't keep a log of anything. We're self-aware of this, yeah. but we're not going to do anything about it. This is why my YouTube channel is going to be great, because, yeah, it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be chaos. Usually, you leave this work to qualified mechanics. Or Steph. Or a not qualified Steph. <clears throat> Want it to be this? Yeah, this. What? This big sneaky little snake. I have no idea, he seems to be in the wrong side of the engine, but... Yeah, but there's a bunch of cables and a big... and a big cable. Time to tackle the top side! Today's task is to chase the loom and disconnect it completely from the motor. 
This meant needing to remove the fuel rails, disconnect all the brackets getting away of the cabling, and removing what I think was the piping for the intake. Taking out the fuel rail, the injectors, just like that. I'm wondering, I'll see how much they are, but it might be an idea to get some new injectors as well. There's nothing wrong with these. The car drives fine, but while it's out, might as well. Once all the clutter was removed, the loom was a pretty simple job. Just trace through and unbolt where needed. The plastic clips had definitely seen better days and were incredibly brittle. So take care when removing these and I would definitely recommend covering the intake with paper towels or something to stop any foreign matter going where it shouldn't. And just a 12 mil, I hope it might be a 10. That's a 12. Cool, loom is completely disconnected. Now that the engine is ready to be dropped, we need some chains, which we don't have. So what we ended up getting was just ordering some 450 kg rated ratcheting straps. Um, I've been told that these will work fine. Also another option is seat belts, but we don't have any seat belt spares. So we're gonna use these, hook them up to the two hooks on the top of the forage. Um, the plan is to jack it up slightly just so we can start um, undoing all the engine uh, mounts and the transmission mounts and then we're going to lower the motor um, down and hopefully the car is high enough up that we will be able to slide the motor out. But if that's not the case, we'll get the engine um, and gearbox on the floor, then we'll unstrap it and then we'll just lift the car up a little higher and then pull the engine out. So that's the next plan of attack. Alright, so apparently the first thing we need to do is remove the transmission mounts. One is here, I believe, and the other is just there. One engine mount is out. These two bolts here. Whoa. 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 Cool. All right. Whoa. Oh, hello. I think, uh, sorry. Oh, you can't see it. All right, on top of the bed of your tray. You still can't see this bolt here, I suspect just because it looks like it, is the engine mount bolt. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that was loose. <laughs> She's gone. So as you can see, the car wasn't jacked up high enough, so we are going to be removing the red bumper, which is just four bolts um, on the inside of the car, so we'll get the camera shifted there for that. Remove the bumper, we should then have exposure to link up with the rear chassis rails. The only issue I've got is with the tow hooks, it apparently can um, damage the car. So yeah, we'll just remove the bumper and kind of decide from there what to do next. Removing the lining was pretty simple as none of the parts were affixed. However, I do believe that from factory they are all held in with plastic clips. Once the lining is removed, you will need to remove the intake, which is held together in with a couple of nuts, before then removing the 8mm fasteners holding on the taillights. There's a lot of them, so be sure to double check you've removed them all. After that, the taillights should pop out with not much resistance. Tail light is out. Wasn't sure if it needed to be removed. I don't actually think it does, because this sort of lip just pulls in, it doesn't go up again, so I won't need to worry about that. But it has shown me that this bolt here is for the bumper support, which you can probably see down there somewhere. Now the internet said there was only there was four of them. The second one's just over there. But I can only see two. So I'm not sure. Alrighty, so a little update. Uh, there are two bolts on the inside of the trunk that need to be removed, but also the exhaust hanger brackets. They are also just 14 mils. It should be fine because it's still held up at the top. Yeah, but I'm I'm not quite sure how we're going to get that to work, but on both sides. So this is where the bumper support and the tow hook connects. I don't know how we're going to do that, but we'll figure something out. Damage. Just do that. Yeah. That's the only idea I can think of. Using those anchor points, both straps are looped through and then hooked up to the engine crane. If you are going to be jacking up your car this way, I definitely recommend you remove both your tail lights, as while the jack lifts the car, it will start to squeeze up against. So if there's any plastic or any kind of delicate components, they will crack. So we have just repositioned the engine so that it is now on the dolly completely. 
um, I suspect it will absolutely tilt as the car gets lifted, but I just want to try and keep it in a good spot. Another thing I just realized is how are we gonna slide? Oh, I'll have to slide it out the side. Maybe we'll clear out that side um, so that I could try and slide the motor out that way. Went to jack up the car. It was getting caught on something. I'm definitely gonna slip again. And it was getting caught on. Oh shit, I'm slipping again. <laughs> this thing, it was connected to the gearbox. I, I don't know if it's like a gear sensor or something. I don't know, but that was connected to the gearbox, which I think that was the last unit. I'll go underneath. There's not gonna be much lighting. It's gonna be very dark. Oh. Uh, so that was two 14s, sorry, two 12s here. There was also, I tried to remove it from this point and I got it loose and then I realized, oh, it's actually connected to a bracket. So yeah, the bracket was connected here and there was something else that I removed too that I've totally forgotten, but, oh. <laughs> My AC lines are a bit bad. But everything now should hopefully clear for the umpteenth time. I'm now starting to understand why engine drops are so painful. strength and a really really white man who can't see but it's <laughs> so much weight that it makes so little power. Idiots can drop engines! <laughs> I'm so happy. But you need to take the oil cap off. Please. Yeah so you have to take the oil cap off. Sorry no 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 you gotta take the 710 cap off and then and then it clears. That's, ah. that, that's how tight the clearance is. <laughs> so ecstatic we managed to get this thing out. The next clip will be related to removing the transmission and also cleaning up the mess that this job had left behind. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching. Honestly, every view, every comment, it means so much to me. Let me know what you think about the swap and the project so far. If you like it, drop a cheeky like. And I'll see you next week for some more auto-related chaos.